Salutations, YouTube. Uh, got a video idea. Uh, this come to me the other day after watching a uh, project farm. Uh, last Sunday, he uh, <laughs> he released a video uh, on an interesting topic. And now that I'm in the uh, 3D printing world, which I do think that this is absolutely amazing technology. Here we go. We got us a FGC9. Okay. Uh, people in the 3D world might know what it is. I've cleaned up the supports. It was a pain. I think I got this about level. I still got to clean that up and clean all these areas up a little more with files. It's a pain. It really is. The gun is, this, this is really robust. Um, so is this. The upper is absolutely just beefy. I'll touch on this in just a moment. Let's put this to the side. Um, I want to focus on like this part. This is a uh, this is the feed ramp. All right. So this part sits here and screws in there. And as your bullets come out of your magazine, they're going to bang this feed ramp. They're going to bang it constantly. Um, this is your magazine catch. Um, goes in like something like that. You it's got a hole, a detent that you would you know, punch in there, it grabs the magazine, Glock, Glock mags, of course. Yes, it takes Glock mags. Um, and here's your uh, magazine release catch. Now, see, like I said, these are a lot of small parts, like this, like this, this, small part. Charging handle, which eh, it'd probably be fine. I wouldn't worry too much about it. But you could do it with this, too. Um, this, is, this is interesting, uh, because... This is like a pivot point that goes on the side here. And then this sits in here. And well, you put it on there first before you screw it in. You screw it into the upper. And then this basically rocks back and forth. Um, this is the ejector bar. Now, your uh, bolt, this is your bolt. You will uh, get some bar stock and put in here and put through here and then part of the bar stock extends out through here but some of my idea could even work on this too um see but this right here goes in the back with your bar stock in it and your firing pin then you would you put this in like this and then basically it's a pivoting motion okay when the when it goes into lockup it pushes this side out it's not pivoting right because I'm ain't got the pin on there, but it goes into lockup like that. Um, also, another thing, this is kind of a thin wall of plastic here. This is heavy, but this is going to get hot if you were rapid firing. This will get hot too. Um, could be an idea for an improvement here. Um, but as it fires, it would you know blow back would push the bolt back. And the bolt comes back and it grabs this and pushes that. And that reaches in and grabs the 9mm piece of brass. And, you know, I think I might have it upside down. Yeah, I do. Oh, no, I don't. Well, that is the right way. Look like that's a little taller on that side. But anyway, so it would, that would protrude through here and knock the brass out. Throw the brass out of the you know, out of the side, you know, to get rid of it. But my idea after watching Project Farm's epoxy video was we got us some PC7 epoxy, okay? This stuff on his video, and I please recommend everybody go watch it. This stuff he put under a hydraulic press and it took almost 1,200 PSI to break the square block. So, adding evolution, here's your rail, this is your front cover. It, like, the gun seems great. This is a real thick piece of plastic, but there, there's room for improvement. And all I'm talking about is improvement. If you CAD the files for this, added either some straight lines or some grids on the outside where you could smear epoxy on it to make a 
semi-steel reinforcement. I don't see how that would be a bad thing. And you can see how this warped on my bed. I really, that makes me so mad because I'm going to have to shear a lot of that off. This could be a weak point, you know, having that spring get hit all the time by that, uh, you know, reciprocating bolt. But it, it seems like there's room for improvement here. And all I'm talking about is improvement. I mean, thank you, Jay Stark, for doing this. This is amazing and fantastic. And I hope maybe you watched the video. But like this. Okay, so they come from this mold. Um, I do have the mold max. I haven't poured it yet. Uh, I haven't poured it yet because when I mix it, I'm, I want to mix all of it and make a whole bunch of molds for this. But the mold max 60, if you read it, it has like a 500 degree. It's a silicone uh mold which is you know great you know i got a little stringing in there not too much we can clean that up if you want to but it's got like a 500 degree temperature and i mean i've been worried about that too because i mean if you look at lead melts i mean it's got to be pure lead there's ways around it uh to try to you know powder coat the bullet or something and it'd probably be fine especially if you don't do a super grandpappy hot load but um what you know when i was watching all these videos on this video on project form i was thinking about this and i was like well you know i, I went and i looked and they got jb weld high heat and i was like huh that's what if you put this um you know 60 psi at 400 degrees fahrenheit blah 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 blah, blah. it's high heat whatever okay so what if you put this in the base of this mold where the bullets pour in? Then I noticed that JB Weld also has something called extreme heat. And I was like, now that, that's interesting. As you could make this mold and you could put this extreme heat around the mold on the base where the lead's going to hit it. Then you could put the mold max on top of it, do a pour on top so that when this mold comes out, it would be a two-parter. I mean, but if you did this, you might not even have to use, say, the mold max silicone because this will take the brunt of the heat when you're pouring the hot lead in there. But that led me to my point of what got me thinking about this. What if you 3D printed a two-part mold, like two sides? Here, I'm going to grab one from a different one like this. Okay, now you had two parts, thin walls, nothing real ridiculous. This is kind of like a toothpaste, so I don't think you'd have much problem getting it in. You know, in the print, you could make, uh, see these rafts, I, I like printing with rafts, I know some people don't, but um, you don't have to worry about rafts, you can print it straight on the bed, you can make a two-part mold like this. Um, this machine was actually, I had to send that back, but um, two-part mold. You could uh, grab some of my, one of my punches so I can share this idea properly. You could make the mold where one side has female and one side has male prongs. You know, if it's a square mold, we'll use this for it. Well, let me try to find out what's probably the weakest. All right, let's call this the weakest spot. Now, none of this is to scale, but if you built two parts of a mold like these in thin plastic, you're not, this isn't the part. And you made it where it was square little mold and that this was this, the bullet. The part of the mold that's going to get filled up is this. It would be like a reverse upside down. Like you would be pouring the bullet in this side. Or, you know, so, but if you had a piece of a square and it was two parts and then you've got some epoxy like this that has a almost 1200 psi pressure strength of being compressed on a press this stuff held at like 1100 psi at rip temperature at, at pull temp or 1100 pounds and i think it held to 3900 psi on his video at around a piece of pipe with a hole in it he put 3900 psi on it before it let go and popped out. That's some strong stuff. And this is cheap. This is cheap. Uh, but how much of this would it take to make that? Uh, how much of this would it take to make that? How much of this would it take to make that? 
or that, even that. This, there, you make plenty of this. Or this 1913 uh, rail that goes on the top. If you had two molds in a rectangle that had this in the middle of them, and you filled the molds up with this, and then stuck it in a vise, and clamped it together, and let it harden. Even if we couldn't discover or figure out a way to have some good mold release to let this stuff let go of the mold, as long as it's just, you know, small, well, what's it matter? It's, you know, you just throw it. If, it, if you have to break this off, what's the difference in breaking this off or cleaning up supports? You know, I mean, there's really a six and one half dozens to the other. This had a raft on it like these, but that's what I'm saying. What would be the difference in, you know, cleaning off a raft cleaning off supports or just breaking this mold out. I don't see no difference in it, honestly. Um, but the idea could expand even more. I'll bring this in frame. I'm going to do a review of this in a minute. Uh, but this is a, uh, FMDA free men don't ask 17. Uh, it, I put a 22 upper on it just because it's cheap, blah, blah, blah. But, um, so, these rails, you have to buy these rails. I'll do a full review video on this later. But you got to buy these rails, these spooky rails. So, what if you built a mold that could had all these grooves that may make it a three-part mold? Right side, left side, and maybe a top mold for this, where the top, where the right and left would, uh, you know, clamp in. Maybe a four-part mold. Make a fake Glock mag. Just an outer shell. not Nothing major. Just something thin. Where you could put it up in here. And it would fill this void fully. So that the only space in the mold. Was. Where the frame needs to be. And then. You took this. PC7. Or some high heat. But you could also make it with where it incorporates these rails. See, you could leave the rails in it on the print, then do a pour. Then you've got a PC717, or you've got a JB Glock. I mean, the, the choices are endless on this possibility. But it, it seems like maybe it's something that the people over at Deterrence Dispensed, uh, Ivan the Troll, Control Pew, uh, Gunny McGunsmith, Mr. Snow, one of these other 3D printer guys that know a little more about CAD and stuff than I do could maybe answer the question. Um, if they'd like to share some STLs, I'll print the stuff and try it. Uh, I mean, but I mean, I have other ideas too. I don't want to go in too depth. I want to make this in one run. And get it uploaded because I want to show some people my ideas. But if you hypothetically pretended that this was an AR lower. Let's pretend this is an AR lower. The weak point on an AR lower, any printed AR lower, is the buffer tube. Now, most people who know CAD and get the buffer tubes, they, they kind of put more plastic around it. Or, you know, they beef it up with more plastic. And they just keep adding more plastic and adding more plastic. And I'm... Wondering if that's not the right answer. Maybe the right answer isn't to add more plastic. What if the right answer was to remove plastic? Um, figure out a file where you got a grid system that could tie together throughout the part, or a web, like a spider web on it, um, or for the buffer tube, make it thick enough but cut a ring or two rings around it where you could fill it with say pc7 or jb weld or new metal or any of these other people that you know make these epoxies that uh you know project farm tried get these epoxies and then paint them paint this into the paint this into the cracks like around the magazine well do a webbing that would grid in and like have all kinds of grids and roads like lands and grooves into the lower where you could fill it with a 
steel hardening epoxy and then basically the plastic piece would be encased in steel or an epoxy that well, like I said according to that video these epoxies are very strong uh, make a mold for a trigger put a trigger and a hammer two-sided mold right left side for hammer for trigger fill it with this stuff clamp it let it set if, if it works it works I don't see what the problem in that would be and again if you're just printing one or two walls you know it's not much plastic and it'll machine will move fast and uh, you don't have to worry about like for a trigger or a hammer 100% infill. I know they're trying to work on that. I know they they said the Mark II files are trying to figure out a 3D printed trigger and a 3D printed hammer. I'm wondering if I come to this at the right time because I might have a solution. What if you could print two molds that could, say, cast it with these instead of this cheap plastic? This isn't this isn't cheap plastic. This I mean, Esun PLA Plus isn't the most expensive. But it's definitely not the cheapest. But by printing molds, it doesn't matter what plastic you use. You could buy the cheapest garbage whatever because you don't care about it because it's just a mold. That's all it is, a disposable mold that could be printed on your machine and make little parts like this or like this. Anything small. Uh, I mean, but I, you, if your printer's big enough, make something big. Make... You know, if, if it worked on, say, this, or say you went with a 26, that way you wouldn't be wasting too much of this. But if you made a mold to cast something like this on a <laughs> you th three or four part mold, whatever, I probably a four part mold, you have to, you know, set some way to make it all clamp together where you pour this in. Then you're cleaning off supports, but wouldn't it be wonderful if you could do that and that stuff was enough that these rails could be included into the pour. Basically, you would be pouring. Um, I'd love to hear from some of the people at Deterrence Dispense. I'd love to talk to them. If I can get in contact with them, uh, Gunny McGunsmith or uh, Control Pew or Jay Stark, anybody, I mean, I would be more than happy to have a phone call and discuss some of this stuff. Because my problem is, I, I try to learn CAD, but I work, I work 60 hours a week, it seems, every week, and sometimes more. I haven't, I didn't like the print orientation like this. I'll get to that in the review video on this later. But what if this stuff was actually strong enough to replace these? What if this stuff was actually strong enough to, I mean, think about it. You can make a mold for Glock sites. Small little bitty mold, put a little epoxy in it, block rear sight, you know. What, where are the possibilities of something, the idea of, of resin, putty resin, paste resin, even a liquid resin pour, that seems like an idea that could definitely go somewhere in the 3D printing community. Not only in guns, uh, you know, but... Uh, Boys and their guns. I, I'm, I'm a, you know, men and their guns, whatever. Uh, it just seems like this is a good place to start with talking about it. Just like, like I talked about the lands and grooves. What if you made lands and grooves around this and then put the epoxy on it and then had, uh, you know, had, had grooves cut in it in here where it could reinforce and everything could be kind of like, you know, tied together and held by something like this which i can almost guarantee if i printed a solid block of pla i don't know if it could out beat this in a pressure test um i, I just you know it's a thought it might not be a jb weld or a pc 717 might not be possible uh at the AR-15, the plastic is working, but could this be enough to give it that extra hump to make it just now 
Now we've got it. Now we hit it. Could this be the solution to, you know, a hammer or a trigger? Um, could this be the solution to make sure that this doesn't break? I mean, it, it's tough as ever. I mean, it really is. But it still has that possibility of breaking, just like this little thing. I mean, it, it's it, uh, this right here, I think, would probably, from what I can look at, this is probably one of the weakest parts. But the good thing about 3D printing is that this breaks. Turn on your printer 30, 40 minutes later, you got another one. No big whoop. I get that. Um, but this right here, no. If this breaks, whew, Lord, that's a... That was a long print. That was over a day. It was like 30 some odd hours, I think. Uh, but if you added some rigidity to it, well, now you've made the print time less because you're using less plastic. And you're also adding possibly more strength. But um, if you watch Project Farm's video, I, it, I don't think I've seen any video where even carbon fiber filament held up like this stuff did now he didn't make uh say you know a small part out of it and tested strength but he did prove that these epoxies are quite good so i'll end the video with that uh it was good seeing y'all um i guess i'll start with the like share subscribe and if you've got gunny mcgunsmith or uh control pew and you want to you can share this video with them i'd love them to watch it and hear what i have to say if they want to reach out to me i have joined their chats uh on element from gunny mcgunsmith's chat i'm improve the pew and uh on the uh deterrence dispense i'm abraca pew yeah so we'll see what we can i would love to talk to some people about this but uh you know, shoot me a message on there if you're in them rooms. If not, I hope I gave some people some ideas. Maybe some people can start working on this who have a little more free time and no CAD better than I do. I've tinkered with it and I'm not good at it, I'll be honest. Uh, but, yeah, this is this is absolutely amazing. This is, this is so cool. This is probably one of my favorite guns. I mean, believe me, I've got better, but this is, that that, that is something else. That is so neat. Uh, I want to do it with a print orientation like that so the frame looks better. Um, I, you know, it, it's functional, but I, I just, I don't know, I don't like that. I want to print it like that because when I was pulling the supports out of the inside, some people say that, you know, the inside of the gun is, you know, you want this nice and clean so you don't got to clean it up. But I, I don't know, I think, I think I would, if I'm going to have to clean it up, I would rather clean it up in here and make these parts fit instead of leaving it out here because that just looks like you know but it is functional so there is that but all right well that's enough for today uh i'm gonna work on some more videos uh soon i'm gonna try to get more active on the channel but uh everyone out there y'all have a good day and a great rest of your weekend see you in the next video keep shooting